Hey world, John G, Modern Design. Our team builds custom ponds, fountains, and waterfalls out of natural stone and wood, and my goal, educate and inspire the world about ponds and water features. Today's video is going to be about color changing lights. I'm here working at the Oasis. I've learned some tips about how to install these things, some things that I've done to modify the system, and I wanna share that with you, so stay tuned. I appreciate you guys joining the Adams family on our journey. So the main purpose of me wanting to create this video and share it with you is because as we've done the lighting up in here, I decided let's complicate things, imagine that. So there's this big waterfall coming down to the right and I have this fountainscape over here on my left. What I decided I wanna do is I wanna be able to independently control the lighting system for the fountainscape from the waterfall and the rest of the feature as it goes on around the house. So two control hubs put in. I don't have the best Wi-Fi. Working out the Wi-Fi for me has been difficult at my house due to my situation. And I don't know if that's a bug with the system or if it's just my inability to work technology, but I've done some things here to separate the system. So two control hubs, one control hub works this side. The other control hub, wraps all the way around the outside, both sides of the waterfall. And I had to put the hubs all the way up here in my face so that they're close to my house and those receivers can get a Wi-Fi signal. Now I've got a system working, but I'm gonna show you what I did to run the controllers up to the front and how I utilize those with my existing lighting power and didn't have to change everything around. So let me take you down here and show you how all that looks. All right, guys, so there's a couple tricks I'm showing you here. First of all, moving this up towards the front uses my Wi-Fi signal from inside my house. I have barely just enough signal. So I'm just gonna hide this over here as insignificantly as I can. But the thing I don't wanna do is I don't wanna cut this cord. This is where Aquascapes has me set up to hook into my standard low voltage lighting line. So I've actually ran from my transformer because you gotta have your basic understanding of lighting, guys. But the run from the transformer to here would take two of the color changes changing extension cables to get from there to here. And the diameter of the wires inside of there are so tiny that I think a lot of problems can result from doing too many runs with it. If you need one, I'm okay with that. I have no issue, but I don't want to just be straight daisy chaining these extension cables together because you need to understand voltage loss in order to make all that work. So I have run my standard 12 gauge low voltage lighting wire all the way from the transformer to here and here's where i'm going to tie into my lighting system now without getting too complicated you guys should know that i could be running landscape lights off of this wire in addition to tying in the color changing lights here in the middle and controlling those dimmably separate from the landscape lighting system as long as the landscape lighting system isn't dimming and adjusting how much voltage goes to here so if the voltage feed into your color changing lights is constantly where it needs to be which in my opinion is between 12 and 15 volts that's where most LED lights are happy, then you're good. So at this point, I need to convert from this wire into the feed for the color changing light control hub. So I switched over to this control hub, which has the antenna on it. This is the new upgraded model. I had the older versions in my supply box, but unfortunately for me, they just didn't have good enough reception to pick up the signal in my house. It was cheaper for me to do this than get a signal booster. So I'm going from this to this. Now, in order to not void my warranty on my smart control hub pay attention here kids because this is important in this aquascape lighting transformer being that we're pond builders i don't typically use all the aquascape lighting connectors i consider those to be more of a diy product and they work good it's just not how we roll here at modern design so i have extra parts in this 60 watt lighting transformer with Photocell, there happens to be a beautiful little dongle where they have created the piece to hook into the low voltage lighting system. I am simply going to connect this, which is designed to mount into here. I'm gonna make this connection. I'm gonna unscrew this. I'm gonna steal this dongle off of this transformer and I'm gonna use this to tie into my lighting system so that I don't have to cut anything on the control hub if something happens and i need to warranty this item i haven't done any modifications to the control hub i'm feeding it the proper amount of voltage i can still use this to hook up my lighting so this is what i've got going to the control hub so guys it's that simple with running this close to home get it where the antenna picks up the signal I run power from my transformer over to that side i've got one control hub on the other end of the log that control hub is controlling my fountainscape. This control hub on this side runs 
up this side. I've used the uh, the 25 foot cord that has a connector for lights every five feet. And then in a few places where I have two lights, I've used a three way connector screwed into this to put two lights into the one connector. This worked ideally for me. Then I was actually forced to run a conduit underneath where our stream's gonna be. I put a 25 foot lead through there. They also make a uh, extension cord for color changing lights. That's just a 25 foot extension cord with no plugs except the ends. I've run one of those through a conduit underneath the stream up there. So coming from this transformer with power from this control hub, I'm feeding these lights and then I'm running through a 25 foot extension cord. And then I've got another 25 foot extension cord feeding the color changing lights that go down the waterfall on the other side. That's how I've split my two zones up. If that makes any sense to you guys, you'll see when you watch the after footage of the oasis how we can have the lighting in the whole waterfall be white or be light blue and we can light up the fountainscape like it's on fire with a different color that's going to be an awesome effect it was worth the extra work and the extra part so anyways that's my long-winded version of that i'm going to uh, take you down here and show you guys how we've installed some of the lights because a lot of times people give me conversation about is a light placed is a light installed properly placed lights should then be installed where they stay put and do what you want them to do. I'm gonna share that stuff with you guys, so jump down here in the hole with me. All right guys, so a lot of what goes into placing lights for me is, I like to get them down in the water as much as possible to create that magical firelight effect. So for me, placement is kind of threefold, I guess. I think about where my viewing area is gonna be because I don't want a spotlight shining directly in my eyes. Then key number two is, how do I light the waterfall as effectively as possible? And number three is, how can I point that beam of light so that I'm getting some outside effect from it in the tree tops on the side of the house. So as you can see, I've put this light in here underneath me. I've got another one in there. What you can't see is that directly behind where you're looking from is a beautiful Hollywood juniper tree. And it's cut with an upper canopy. It's right on the corner of my house. These two lights are gonna shine directly up through the angle. This is a massive waterfall. The pools are full. This pool is full to here. This pool is full to here. These lights are submerged almost a foot down in the water that's gonna soften them way down. So once I get them where I want, they're shining up, they're gonna light the column of water coming down, create a really interesting effect for this waterfall, and it's gonna shoot at an angle up into that Hollywood juniper, and I'm gonna get flickering lights over there. I've got several lights in here that are working in that direction to make that happen. Then also, lights that you can't see are underneath the rocks on this side. Those lights are pointed through where they're gonna hit waterfalls, and they're gonna cast light on this tree over here. I've got a beautiful Japanese maple behind me. That's gonna receive some flickering light. And I've also got a magnolia behind me over here and a juniper behind me. I have all of these opportunities for some of my light spill, my light pollution, if you will, to do something magical and work for me. So very thought out where the lights go, how they've been placed. There's conduits for all of them, so they're easy to maintain. I spent a lot of time in here, guys, doing a very crafty lighting system. That's gonna be pretty simple for me. When I gotta do maintenance on it, I'm not gonna have to rip a lot of stuff out. It's just been well thought out and well planned from the beginning to the end. So I hope all this information was valuable to you. I hope that it inspires you to do some more creative lighting projects on your water features. I can't wait to share videos of this in its completion with the world. Guys, stay tuned to the Oasis series if you haven't been following it. I'm doing a lot of cool stuff in here. So uh, appreciate you. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Appreciate you joining the Adams family. Peace out. Thank you.